You are Locked On Texas Tech, your daily podcast on the Texas Tech Red Raiders, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We're going to start this thing off right. Raider! Everything runs through Lubbock. Great to be with you again on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network on this special reaction episode coming at you on a winter Sunday in West Texas. Today's episode brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app and create an account and use our code Locked On College for 20 bucks off your first purchase. With the only Chris Level, I'm Casey Cowan, and we are double dipping in the reaction pond here today. We'll get to a, yes, I mean this literally, white knuckle 14 point win for Grant McCaslin and the Tech men's basketball team, but we're also revisiting. The Affair in Lawrence, Kansas. And Chris, you have a top 25 road win now on your resume. It was also uh, white knuckleish at various points throughout the day. Was never easy. And you got to credit Kansas, I think, for a lot of what they made difficult for Texas Tech. But uh, clearly, a lot of credit to the victors as well as Tech goes and pulls off a win on the road as an underdog. And you keep your bowl eligibility hopes alive. As you return back to Lubbock, it's been a busy weekend. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and we're talking. I'm so I switch switch over here. We're talking football here. Okay, That's so right. I'm gonna make sure that yeah, it's been uh, it's been wild. Um, yeah, I I, I thought um, th- this you got a result. Look, they're not gonna send this this game film to Canton, Ohio, and say guys, when we invented this sport. <laughs> This is exactly what the way we 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 dreamt it up, man. It was played beautifully. No, it was a bit of a grind. It was disjointed. It was um, kind of like a Big Ten ish game, like a field position type game. I thought even even Coach McGuire and staff, you know, passed up a few of those fourth down, you know, chances that they normally would go for, and 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 and, and let Austin McNamara. Uh, it could, could, I, I tell you, the weather wasn't a factor. But it reminded me of the Iowa State game a little bit last year. You know, your offense was struggling. Kansas had a lot to do with that. I think your, your quarterback being a bit compromised had a little bit to do with that. Um, I just think it was that kind of game. And I thought you, you know, you 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 did a good job of, of you know, I don't know, staying in it. Um, although what the frustrating part is, is that you, you you tried to if you to just turn it into a three score game at any point I think you you seal it and you couldn't yep. do it um, you know and I I, I think you kind of you're not good enough right now and your Kansas had had again a lot to do with that but that's a it, it feels weird to say Kansas is really good um, I mean the only other two losses they've had again based on the standings coming into this weekend where it gets Texas and Oklahoma State which were one and two in the Big Twelve standings. Um, they, they were 16th in the college football playoff rankings and they uh, top 20, uh, as far as other polls and things like that. But one thing holds true. Kansas has typically been better than you at basketball and you have typically been better than them at football. I think you're now 23 and two, uh, overall, which is amongst the big 12 schools in 10 or more meetings. It's the most lopsided series between two teams that exists so um there was no douglas coleman moment here for the jayhawks or anything (laughs) like that uh yeah you uh you figured out and you got a result man and i don't i don't care i'll take three more just like it we could sit here and talk about how ugly a ucf and a texas and a bowl game win until we're blue in the face i will sit here and enjoy it thoroughly uh if you have the right if you're on the right side of that and all of a sudden you've won two one score games in a row i don't want to gloss over that as well well, and I got to say, to a great degree, this is another one of those wins that is actually a sight for sore eyes. It's not something that makes your eyes sore because I've been a Texas Tech fan all my life. And once upon a time, if your shots weren't falling, if things were uglied up, you almost had no chance of winning that game. You didn't win these kinds of games once upon a time, whether you weren't tough enough or you couldn't adjust enough or adapt enough within the game or be varied enough. They shut down your passing attack. Well, I guess we'll see you next Saturday. I mean, we've had a lot of those days, right? And forget about the defense. They weren't going to keep you in it anyway because you could hardly even remember to bring one on some road trips in some previous (laughs) eras. 
so th this is a win that you had some like previously in the Joey McGuire era where you're winning close ones, which is one of the things that certainly has been on his resume that's different from some predecessors. Um, but Chris, this is, <laughs> I'm right there with Joey McGuire after the game. Uh, I haven't seen or heard of an ugly win. And especially <laughs> if you're a Texas Tech fan, you have not been a fan of a program that has had the character, the metal, the intestinal fortitude, whatever it is, to win games like this going back 10 to 15 years and even maybe a little beyond that. So I'm not ever going to bemoan you finding a way to win a different style. It reminds me, although I think Kansas is much better, it reminds me of obviously what you referenced there in Ames, Iowa a season ago. So credit to Tech for being tough. It was a bring your own guts kind of day and they definitely emptied that bucket. You already mentioned one aspect of the gathering of uh, the Knights of the most valuable player table, I guess. Uh, the specialists being very special. You mentioned Austin McNamara. We can talk about Gino Garcia, and you see the names there as well. Taj Brooks, right along with his offensive line. I think you got a credit in that phase of the game. And, of course, Tim DeRuiter's defense, man. Take your pick. Go any direction that you want to go because uh, these seem like the parts that really allowed you to win a ball game. Yeah, the, the way you listed off of the way you just talked about it right there. By the way, I did hear the when your shots aren't falling reference. You're trying to confuse me on which sport we're talking about now as I've had to battle Was it meant to trick you up? In my own head all weekend <laughs> long. I'm like, okay, where am I? What sport? Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just proving he's the best, folks. <laughs> complimentary football, though, is what I hear you describing. In a lot of ways, it, yeah. It, it, it all kind of, yeah. I mean, and, and again, wasn't perfect. Again, it wasn't, yeah, you'd love for them to all be easier. But, yeah, you're right. You're not a program that can can turn your nose up at any kind of conference win. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, and especially a road one at that. Uh, and so, you know, because if you, because, I mean, right here, we, we, how long was the stretch before you'd had a, a conference winning record? You broke that streak last year. And now here you are sitting here at four and three in in the uh, in the league. So uh, it's because if you can get one more and get bowl eligible, you're going to have it. You're going to end the season with a with a back to back years with a conference winning record. It's been I think ten ish years, or we go back to 08, 09, uh Oof. since that happened. That's that's progress to me. If if you can figure <laughs> out a way to get it done, uh, I know the league is is it been tweaked and it shifted a bit, but. Still, um, especially with all your quarterback injuries, uh, and, and I think that that is. Uh, but I, I think complimentary football is what I hear yeah. you kind of describing. Taj really grinding away at it in the first half. I, I, as as we get to the end, and you see Kansas come back, you're thinking that penalty on Dennis Wilburn of holding on Taj Brooks's would have been his second touchdown that comes <laughs> off the board. How massive that was. Let's not, you know, gloss over the fact that Dennis Wilburn was like eight yards away as Taj Brooks crossed the goal line before the <laughs> hanky came out, whatever. I think it was a hole. It was just like not anywhere near the play, and it was, you know, whatever. Um, you can call you holding know. every play is what they say. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> but, I mean, that, that could have been massive, uh, but – uh, yeah, I, I thought you played field position a little bit. I thought Gino hit, hit you know, he made the makeables. Uh, he missed a 48-yarder, uh, you know, oh, oh well. Um, I think anything outside of 45 yards is is a question mark. And I, he made a 55-yarder one versus TCU. He misses a 48-yarder here. You're going to live and, and die by some of those long-distance ones, I, I think, like that. But um, And then I thought defensively, I thought you tackled well. I mean, go back to that. Go back to that fourth and goal play with Kansas fairly early in the game. They go for it, and it's Jacob Rodriguez that shoots the gap and has got Daniel Highshaw like two or three yards behind the line of scrimmage. And then before help arrives, turnover on downs. You know, you 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 pick up uh, uh, right there, and Kansas is off the scoreboard totally. I think it was a ten to nothing game at the time. But it's just nice to see some of your guys back, uh, and Jacob Rodriguez specifically there. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uh, guys like Jalen Hutchings, Rabbit, Ben Roberts, Baskerville. I mean, you had so many guys contributing time and time again on that side of the football uh, that allowed you to still be in a position at the end of the day uh, to have a chance to rely on a specialist to get a win. Yeah. So shout out to Gino Garcia. Shout out to Austin McNamara, who is doing what he does typically when given the opportunity. And just for a little entertainment value's sake, 
Shout out to the Red Raiders, finding new and creative ways to entertain us as fans. You want to talk about the ultimate bend, but don't break defense. You ever seen one to the tune of 99 yards, followed by a goal line stand? Maybe not before Saturday, but they gave it to us there, right? It's always something new, it seems like. But you finished like you wanted to, and uh, man, did a lot of things you liked to keep you on pace, on track to fight for bowl eligibility and maybe then something more interesting before the season is done. we got plenty more on the football front as we kick off the week with you tomorrow, and something obviously I think is at the forefront of a lot of our minds we'll dive further into, that being the health of Baron Morton. We know there's not going to be a time this season where he's sitting there at 99.9 or 100, but what was he cooking at Saturday, and what are some realistic expectations as we wrap up the regular season? We'll get into that and more. Coming up on tomorrow's Monday episode of Locked On Texas Tech. As for the rest of our time with you here today, okay, pull out the basketball uh, cliche list there, Chris. We're going to switch <laughs> gears and hit the hardwood. It's a win for Grant McCaslin and the Red Raiders. 14 points at the end of the day. Didn't quite feel like that throughout the journey. We'll recap it and react next on Locked On Texas Tech. First, today's episode brought to you by Game Time, and you shouldn't have to sweat it out when buying tickets to your favorite events, and with Game Time, you won't, because it's always a breeze. Using the Game Time app, where you're going to find killer last-minute deals, views from every seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event, and even an hour after it begins, which means Game Time is the place to find last-minute seats for any event. The fastest, easiest way to buy tickets, and not just fast, but it's also secure and simple to use when you download the Game Time app. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time by downloading the Game Time app, creating an account, and then use our code Locked On College for twenty bucks off your first purchase. That's Locked On College, L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. Locked on college for 20 bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and use our promo code locked on college for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today for last minute tickets at the lowest price. Guaranteed. Thanks for joining us on Locked On Texas Tech on the Locked On Podcast Network on this special reaction episode as we were just chopping up tech over KU on the road 1613. It's back to the LBK for what went down on Sunday, the day that Chris and I are joining one another for this conversation. Chris, off the call or fresh off the call here as we're joining one another this Sunday afternoon from United Supermarkets Arena as Grant McCaslin and company pick up a win in game number two of this young season. San Jose State coming into town. And man, Chris, really giving Texas Tech all they wanted and then some. Before we get into the details, let's take a listen Post game to Red Raider head coach Grant McCaslin. What a great team! I mean, they they came in here. I thought with a great plan. They've got an experienced point guard. Coach Miles does a tremendous job in preparation. They make you defend, you know, constantly through physicality and a lot of different actions. Um, and we 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 wanted to tell our guys do a great job over the course of the game because we have respect for them. But we felt like if we could keep pushing it on them, even though it didn't benefit early. It finally did break open late. And I thought our guys grit, rebounding, and guarding just threw a lot of uh, lack of offense, to be honest. And that shows that our team's really mature and, and thought it was a, a gritty win. And um, give them credit, though, because I thought they came in here with a great plan and made it hard on us. And uh, our guys showed some composure and found a way to separate late in the game as we always maneuver our way through these non-conference games and it's these non-power five group of five type teams or the the, the mid-majors if you want to call them that you know people gloss over a lot of these teams this is this was a 21 win team last year uh tim miles has coached over 800 games um he was a long time nebraska head coach he was at colorado state for a lot of years north dakota state um i mean he's a he's a really good basketball coach i thought they had a veteran roster that most of them returned, you know, he, Tim Miles was the coach of the year in the mountain West last year. They went to the postseason, uh, one of those postseason tournaments, not the NCAA tournament. Uh, but the, the, these are kind of the sneaky tough games that just sneak up on you. I think Texas tech was maybe favored by 15 and a half. You won by 14. So v Vegas kind of knew this would be a bit tricky. 
they they had a couple of dudes because they they had just blown two teams out coming into this deal. Uh, they had two guys that were shooting averaging over fifty percent from behind the arc. Uh, I thought you held them for like one of one of ten or one of eleven from behind the arc, and and it was a grind. Uh, I, I thought it absolutely was. I thought. Pop Isaacs didn't didn't score a lot. I think you didn't score a lot in general. You didn't shoot the ball uh, very well, and I thought you had to kind of manufacture it. But it was an eighteen to two run to end it, and I thought the crowd kind of affected San Jose State a little bit. You started to make a few shots because in the opener versus A and M Commerce, it was the free throw line that gave you uh, offense. I mean, you twenty nine trips. I think you made twenty four of those. Uh, and AM Commerce just made the one point. And 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 this was a, a game versus San Jose State where the three point shot wasn't falling and and you didn't have these a ton of trips to the free throw line either. So you had to, to grind a bit. I think they finished with just under 40 points in the paint. Um, and it was it was I think Devin Cambridge was big. I thought Joe Toussaint had a little mini six oh run down the stretch, but it's it's harder now than it ever has been in these non-conference games because one, every team that most teams, I should say, in the Power Five have an entirely new team, and so you, you everybody year to year is putting all these new pieces together early on in seasons, and then the the, the flip side of that is. Every other team out there in the, in the mid-major category of these buy games, they've all loaded up with older guys too, and they've it, they're harder to scout because you don't know all the pieces that have joined them and how they're going to play. I mean, all these things, and so it leads to a lot more parity and potential upsets early on in the season. But I, I thought Texas Tech gutted one out. I mean, you're Grant McCaslin right there saying it was gritty and. But your your team is is a bit flawed, you know. I, I think that you, but you're seeing uh, kind of different ways to win. But I thought this is a win that, in time, it'll look better and better because I think San Jose State will go on to win twenty plus again. Uh, before we get out of here, I thought there was a uh, clear injection of some of that toughness and grip from a guy you already mentioned. It was forty thirty eight with seven minutes left, and then Toussaint just gets ticked off or something. He does some of the scoring himself, as you mentioned. But I, I just thought you really saw him kind of impact the team. Maybe he impacted the crowd, and then they do that in return as well. I just love what I saw from Joe Tucson. It was a lot of what we hoped I think he'd be bringing to the table, especially in some key moments. Power five experience, um, veteran guard experience. Um, I I thought a couple other things before we we wrap it up here, but I thought uh, you team rebounded well. It, It can't just be Warren Washington. Uh, and I thought Pop Isaacs did a really good job of, okay, it's not my day to score. Uh, you know, it's it's not that he wasn't trying, but it just wasn't happening. But he did a really good job with, with a, as a facilitator. He, he had, I think, five or six assists, I want to say. Uh, but uh, – and, and I, I thought that Joe Toussaint, Bronx Toughness, uh, at some point we'll do a segment called Joe Believer. Uh, you know, and, and I'll, I'll kind of get into some background about Joe Toussaint, which I think is, is kind of fun. That has to do with Bob Huggins. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's all about guard play in this game more often than not. And I thought those two guys, for a variety of different reasons, kind of bailed you out, if you will, or kind of got you to the finish line in a very difficult and, and tough game versus San Jose State. But these these are – that's what the non-conference is, man. If you can continue to le- you know learn and, and – and grow and wins, man, what more could you ask for? No doubt. Uh, Nice to see double-digit scoring from uh, Cambridge. We mentioned Tucson. You mentioned Warren Washington. Uh, You know, Pop Isaacs, you're going to need better than one for seven from him to win in the Big 12 Conference. But I got to say, given the context of his career uh, at Texas Tech, you mentioned the assists and some of the other ways he impacts the game, has seven rebounds as well. I kind of felt like that was, uh, you know, a small sign of maturation or some maybe growth as a player when the buckets aren't falling and you are a scorer. That is what you do best, but the bucket isn't falling. Um, you find other ways to continue to stay engaged and impact the game. And, you know, sometimes those guys come back around in the 39th minute and it hadn't been falling all night. And then, boom, you stay engaged and there's a bucket there for you to do something for your team. But and- I-, I thought that was nice to see at this point in his career. And go look at how many combined turnovers that Pop Isaacs and Joe Toussaint had, because I think it's zero. And I think One. that 
Somebody okay, put well, one under Isaacs, which must be wrong <laughs> if Level doesn't remember it that way. So check that Texas Tech. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I was I was close, yeah, but you're close. But but that with how many minutes both of those guys played, and and to come off of the game where you know you had 18 turnovers as a team, I thought you know you you got better from game one to game two in that category, uh, and trying to do too much, make the simple plays, and all those things. Because at yeah. some point, some of these nights the shots will fall. I mean, you you know you've got too many good shooters on this team. Those shots will drop. I mean, Chance McMillan, he had a couple of good looks, uh, you know, versus um, San Jose State. But there's going to be a lot of nights where he drops in four or five of them because he's a career 40% three-point shooter. And those guys are difficult to find. That is elite. You put a four in, in that, per, you know, right. you know, whatever. I mean, you know, 38, whatever. Yeah, that's one thing. 40. But this is for his career. Um, th- those shots will drop, and uh, and you'll be better for it. But uh, anyway, you grinded one out, man. But I thought thought it was a good win, and 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 it's funny because you look up and it's like a fourteen point win. I, I thought you were going to end up winning it by maybe four or six or whatever. But yeah, double digit win at that. <laughs> I'm on the edge of my seat most of the game, and then yeah, what are we worried about? It's fourteen, uh, easy breezy at the end of the day. Okay, coming up next for Grant McCaslin and the Red Raiders. Red Raiders, pardon me. It's a Thursday nighter. Uh, from United Supermarkets Arena as Coach McCaslin's continued assault on agricultural and mechanical system Texas University <laughs> programs continues. We got the Aggies, the Lions in the rear view. Now it's Texas A&M Corpus Christi. The Islanders coming to the LBK. That's Thursday. We got a lot of football to discuss between then and now before we get you set up for hoops and hope you'll join us for each outing make sure you're subscribed on youtube or anywhere you get podcasts so you never miss an episode chris thanks for the time today man enjoyed it as always absolutely man appreciate uh you and uh, we got through a busy weekend we made it folks we that's did right it. lawrence and- lubbock i don't know sport i don't know yeah it wasn't yeah i don't know it's it's uh shots weren't falling that was a football reference <laughs> uh, i i loved it uh i picked up what you were putting down we're back on the same page here we go man busy week ahead That's right. Back in the LBK with a chance to become bowl eligible and one that I think we're feeling pretty good about, just like we imagined it six weeks ago, right? We're all going to be joining in a united chorus saying yes to that. All right. Join us for tomorrow's episode as we kick off a brand new week. For Chris, I'm Casey. We'll see you for the next round on Locked On Texas Tech.